Creation and welcome to our virtual experience. Just a reminder that the top tipper wins a five minute one on one meet and greet with Lisa after this, this is over. So make sure your top supporter information is updated with your current email address. To do that, just look underneath the stage at screen and you'll see where it says top supporter rewards. Scroll to the bottom of that section and click the green complete your top supporter information. If you'd like to tip, click the green tip button on the bottom left hand corner of your stage at screen. Okay, we have a really special treat for you today. When Lisa did her first meditation with us, it was really the first time that I had meditated. And I never thought I could slow my brain down long enough to meditate, but I'm so glad I did. And it's really been life changing. With that being said, let's please welcome Ms. Lisa Berry. Hi, everyone. Hi. Oh, it is so wonderful to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for everybody who has joined from Argentina, Germany, and Alabama, all over the world, which is really, really cool. And I just want to set the intention that whatever anyone needs, be it a word, a mantra, a vibe, that they receive it. And I know for myself, I'm open to receiving all the love that the universe has for each and every single one of us today. And I just want to affirm for us that we are worthy of receiving that. So welcome and hello from London. It's so great to see everybody here, some familiar faces. And I just thought I would start by opening the floor because I know some of you have done my meditations before. And some of you are a part of my newsletter, so you're able to participate with a lot of the courses that I've been putting out. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to get them out now. We're also going to do an exercise that helps us tackle the monkey brain. That's when we're constantly, constantly thinking. And we're also going to have a beautiful meditation. So let me know if you've got your questions. And I will just dive right in while I let that feed catch up and just let you know what we're gonna what the exercise is and why I told you to bring ice. And if you are just cooling in right now, catching in right now and cooling into what I've been going, why I've been saying, bring ice, bring ice, bring ice. It's a beautiful exercise that I did and learned when I was pregnant. Hey breathers. And it really helped me keep my mind focused and off the self-deprecating thoughts and, and, and help me become aware of every time I would self-sabotage myself. So the ice is an exercise where we're gonna hold it for a minute in our hands and then we're gonna let it go. And then we're gonna hold it again for a minute in our hands and we're gonna let it go. And we're gonna hold it for a minute in our hands and then let it go. And while we're holding the ice, I want you to pay attention to what your thoughts are what's coming up, how do you react when you get uncomfortable. So this is going to be a wonderful exercise that you can do anytime you want and you, it can be your meditation to help you really kind of mine through your thoughts of what am I actually thinking about that I'm not aware that I'm thinking about. This will bring them to the forefront. So let's have a look at what people are kind of talking about. Hi everybody. Just want to see if there's any questions to start. You guys just dive right in and let's see. All right. Hey, Green Train, Kansas. All right. I do have, so we have a supernatural question because I just want, because it's coming to the end. So I know we have all the feels around one of our favorite shows coming to a close. And I will say one of my favorite scenes to shoot has not aired yet. <laughs> so that's the answer to that question. There's um, some juicy stuff coming up. And uh, for you guys, my, I was pregnant during the last 
episode that I filmed. So that was kind of wild. Little 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 secret. And we have another question. I'm just looking right here. So if you haven't done any exercise or meditation for months or years, how do you make sure this is a part of the day? That's a really great question because when I get asked, how do I incorporate meditation into my life? I always tell people, do not try and incorporate meditation into your life. We are busy enough as it is. So when you try and add one more thing to the ever growing to-do list, it just never gets done. It just gets put to the bottom and it's really hard to do it and feel bad about yourself for not doing something that you want to do. So I always say, add it to something you're already doing. So meditation is just an, a state of mindfulness. It's a state of being 100% present to whatever it is that you're doing. That could be chopping vegetables. That could be reading a book to your, to your kid at night. That could be going for a walk. That could be on a call with a friend. It could be very active. And so my easiest way that I tell people to get, and get meditation and mindfulness into their, into their day is to add it to when they're brushing their teeth because it's something you're doing already to add it to going to the bathroom. You're like, everybody's got to pee. And just take three deep breaths and then let that be the start of your practice because once you start to get the accumulative effect, like once it builds up and you start to become more and more aware, you'll want to naturally just go and sit somewhere and be by yourself and turn inward so that you can return to yourself as often as possible because you'll start to crave it. I often liken it to when you're, you know, kids at Halloween, or maybe at, you know, 22, wanting a whole bunch of candy after a night of going trick-or-treating and eventually after eating so much candy, even you will get sick of it and you'll want something healthy. So after doing it for a long enough time, you'll want to actually build on it. And that is how I, I would encourage anyone to build in a meditation or mindfulness practice is to add it to something you're doing already. And brushing your teeth is a beautiful place to start because you're doing it every day in this. And we have another question. How has meditating been going with a baby? Because I'm a mom now, guys. I'm a mom. It's wild. And it has been, do we have any moms? Give me like a hashtag mom, <laughs> you know, if, if I got moms with me um, right now, because meditating with a, with the baby it definitely has come with its challenges. So it, again, like I was saying with the other one, is I can't just always get away and do a 15 minute meditation, you know, like we get to do today. Um, I have to, a lot of times when my son's sleeping on me is when I just go inward and say, I center myself within myself and I connect my breath and I allow myself this time to be love, exude love, and just breathe with my son and, and just appreciate that he's getting this energy because when he needs me, he needs me and I need to be present to that. And so that's in and, in and of itself another way of being really, really present. And how do you get focused? Beautiful question. Uh, that's part of the meditation that we're going to be doing today because the getting focused is one of the biggest challenges because a lot of times we think when we get focused, that means we can't have any thoughts whatsoever. And that is true, is not meditating. Meditation, again, is just being mindful. So whenever you catch yourself, you know, thinking, I'm thinking a lot, you're aware. You're in awareness zone and on your way to mindfulness though because that is all you really need to be doing because when you can catch yourself thinking or overthinking or overanalyzing that's when you're actually in a state of awareness and mindfulness so that is focus and if you have ever had a situation where you're kind of like i i, I just saw red or i blacked out and now i'm eating a bag of cookies and I, I don't even know how they got in my hands and now they're done. Those moments are when I really remember for myself that this has happened, where I, I had to go back and remind myself that there are so many steps that I chose to not be present to. 
And as I come back to myself after having a baby and the pressure that I have been also being an actor and wanting to feel good in my body, you know, I've also had, you know, nine months of pretty much eating whatever I wanted. <laughs> and, and that's a habit that I need to kind of break myself of. And I was talking with a friend of mine and she commented, and we do this with each other often, where she called me out on what I was saying. Because the words that we say to ourselves are so powerful. And she said, you know, you said I knew it was going to be hard at least 15 times in the last five minutes we were talking. Do you want it to be hard? Is that really what your goal is? Is that really what your intention is? And I was like, no. So we decided to find a new mantra for me. And I'm gonna share that with you today because I found it super helpful in terms of staying on task with my intention, which is to love myself. And as I you know, go on a new journey of losing weight, feeling fit and strong in my body again, I don't want to tell myself, I knew this was going to be hard, I knew this was going to be hard, that's only going to make it even harder for me to get up and work out and stay mindful to what I want to do. So the new mantra that we came up with was, I knew I was going to have to be present. And even when I say that, it feels so much better than when I say, I knew it was going to be hard. I mean, even through this technology and through the live feed, I'm sure you can feel the difference of like when I say, I knew it was going to be hard versus I knew I was going to have to be present. There's just something a little bit more expansive and a lot more open and I knew I was going to have to be present. And believe me, I have walked through a grocery store saying I knew I was going to have to be present as my mantra for all of 30 minutes just so that I wasn't going for the things that were going to be counterintuitive to the goals that I set for myself. So if anybody is going through something exceptionally hard, because I know we're all in a pandemic and we're all dealing with this, the, the whole mess of the world being turned upside down, um, I encourage you and invite you to use this mantra as a way of just finding a little bit more stillness and a little bit more peace within yourself so that you can give yourself grace in those moments by just allowing yourself to remember that actually when I said I wanted to lose weight or when I said I wanted to find a partner or when I said I wanted to do X, Y, Z, you know, what you're really saying is you want to be present to the journey. And so for anybody who has done my Trinity Truth uh, manifestation series, then you know that it's a three-fold process where first we have to set an intention which is very different than a goal because a goal is something that we do with an outcome in mind that is in the future versus an intention is something that is present and who we want to be right now, right here. So I want to love myself versus I want to lose 10 pounds. But in and of itself, you're saying the same thing. And so I have the next step, which is the glue to it all, which is inviting that energy in. So we can tell ourselves we have the intention to do one thing, but if we are not open to receiving it, it's kind of like when you get a package in the mail and you have it go back to the sender. It's like you've got to accept the package. And then the last goal to the Trinity of Truth method is connecting with your heart, which is one of the strongest energy centers in our body that is literally like a magnet for all things in our life, be it good or bad. And how we feel is the power that connects us to drawing things to us. So we connect with our heart and we take a minute and we just affirm for ourselves, I am worthy of receiving X, love, forgiveness, grace, patience, you put in the blank. Um, and and if, you, if you haven't, I know that there's a link with the stage of event as well. And there's also a link with my Instagram account and all my accounts where you can join my and actually do the mini series that I have. It's just a three video training series that lets you completely go forth in uh, manifesting miracles instead of misery. <laughs> and if we don't have any more questions, I'd love to dive in. Do people have ice? Do people have ice to try this out? I have my ice. I have my husband's uh, 
whiskey stones. <laughs> I don't drink, but he does. And I'm gonna set a little timer here for one minute so we can actually feel the coldness sinking in. And I'm gonna put about five in my hand. And if you are using ice, have your towel, have a bowl ready to go, because uh, it will get melted. So I'm gonna put this in my hands and I'm gonna get the timer and you will go for one minute. And what I find for myself, I'll hold it up here. What I find for myself, because I've been doing this a while, I'm gonna add a little extra to it. Because that's gonna make it a little bit more challenging for me. Mm. And you feel the coldness and immediately I just go to it's cold. And then I have to allow myself to dive into where do I need to go to not focus on the on the cold hand <laughs> that I'm, I'm holding ice in. And that forces me to focus on something else, which is also a wonderful thing we can remember to do in life. Because right about now, you know, it's like, okay, I'm starting to feel the cold. And we're about 10 seconds away from a minute being over. So it doesn't feel so unmanageable. Um, and we've just hit a minute now. So I'm gonna put it down for one minute. And you'll notice that felt probably pretty manageable and you were able to do it and it didn't really force you to get super uncomfortable, but you started to be like, oh yeah, it's kinda cold, kinda, I'm feeling it. And that's just the first wave of chatter that goes up in our mind. And that's the first time when comfortable situations come up is you might not lose it right away we might just feel a little uncomfortable, but this is the first nudge of something happening that makes us feel a little like wanting to crawl out of our bodies because it's not what we're used to. And so we're gonna, in about 30 seconds, we're gonna pick the ice back up again in the same hand so that we can really feel what's happening because it's kind of cooled down, but then it's still got a little tingle to it and you can still feel it. And this is, this is life, you know? things that make us feel uncomfortable come in and they go, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's still a little bit of a residue of like something was there. And before we get a chance to get over it, as you can see right now, we're back in our next minute and we get uncomfortable again. And so I'm putting a lot of ice on my, on my hand because I find this exercise to be quite helpful. And do we have people doing the ice exercise with me? Or am I just doing the ice exercise by myself? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. We got 30 seconds in. And now you probably feel it a little bit more that we're at 30 seconds in because, damn. And so this is when I would encourage the verb breathing. This is when we've got to breathe a lot deeper and take it from maybe if it was in your neck down into your chest and bring it even lower so that we can withstand the cold in our hand. And then in about five seconds, we're going to be done. And now we're on to our mimic off with the cold. And and yes, baby steps are the way to go. I'm just seeing some like baby steps, that's great advice. I'm so glad you appreciate that. Um, because this is, what I really love about this exercise is it just is such a subtle way to kind of get a peek into our mind that we're usually not paying attention to. We're going behind the curtain of just like, how am I thinking when I get uncomfortable because I'm uncomfortable and not really paying attention. And so that's what we do. And so in about 20 seconds, we have to pick up the ice again. We're going to do it one more time. And then we're going to really see how each time it probably gets the same hand, each time it gets a little bit more challenging to just hold ice, you know? And that's like, it could be anything, something that we're super used to dealing with. Let's pick up our ice again. It could be something that we're used to dealing with, but the more we have to deal with it, the harder and the harder it gets. And so all of a sudden, something that was so simple has now become really challenging. 
And this is what COVID has done to all of us, is it's hammered us into having to be super present. And we're not used to being super present. So we're having to try and grab at things that we're not used to grabbing at. And so we might have been able to handle a bad day, you know, before the pandemic, but since the pandemic, bad days just come in such succession that it's like, I can't even keep up. And you might feel like you're falling behind the eight ball a little bit. And so I'm, I'm aware that my hand is quite cold right now. And what this, what this always reminds me of is I, I get to a place where it's like, I can't do it. It's too cold or I want to drop it or this isn't, this isn't working for me. And, you know, with, with the passing of so many great people in the last two weeks, alone, um, I've really been inspired to step into the best version of myself. And that requires that I take on the challenge of you know, being the best version of myself every single day and taking on the challenge of allowing myself to get uncomfortable and reminding myself that I knew I was going to have to be present. So let me know if that mantra is is working for you. Oh, we've got moms in the house. Let me know if that mantra is working for you, if you feel the resonance with it as well. Um, and if there's anything that I've ever posted about in regards to that, let me know how that works with you. And we're almost about to get ready to go back into our last minute of doing the ice exercise. And I'm so excited to hear how you guys feel about the ice exercise. So give me a hashtag ice if you're if you're playing along with me in the comments just so I know um, because I really do love this exercise and I, I use it as a practice with my contractions for a really long time because they just help me be more mindful to the fact that I need to breathe deeply. So let's just give our last minute, pick up our ice, get it in our hand. And especially when it's like wet, it's dripping down your hands, and then it's just like, well, oh, it's uncomfortable. Um, it's really cool. And oh, yay, we got people who are looking for doing it. Right on. Oh, I love it. So many people are y'all doing the ice. Um, yeah, y'all doing the ice. I love it. Um, I can't wait to hear how you guys feel about this and to hear what comments come up. Because it's one of those things I used to do when I was a personal trainer. Um, I would make people hold plank and I would ask them what's coming up, what's coming up in your mind right now. And a lot of times people would be like, I can't, it's too hard, I gotta stop. And I would remind them to try and catch those thoughts throughout the day when you're not in plank, when you're not doing something uncomfortable, when something uncomfortable is happening to you. And there's our last minute. Oh, I can't wait to hear how you guys all did with the ice challenge. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that exercise because I find it to be a really good one, especially if, you know, you've been having one of those weeks where a whole bunch of stuff just keeps going wrong and you're like, what is in my energy? I feel like those kind of uh, practices just help bring them to the forefront. So you're kind of like, oh, that's how I've been thinking. Um, <laughs> one person's like, it burns. It does. Especially when you're doing it for the first time. And, um, and that's, uh, and that's a really cool way to just tap into how have I been thinking? Where do I where do I start to go, you know, down down into those dark territories? Because especially when we get uncomfortable, that is when our mind is at its weakest and we need to spiritually be at our strongest. So this really does help trigger all of that. And um I wanna know, yeah, exactly. Someone's like I just had one of those weeks for a long time, you know? And um, like I said, I, I've said it before, where what used to work is not working now. And so just to give you insight into the type of meditations that I do that we're gonna be doing at the end of this, of this event is a body scan meditation because one thing that I can say for myself is the energy is moving so fast. And to have discernment over what we're saying, how we're thinking, how we're interacting with our friends, families, loved ones, social media, 
within a matter of seconds, we can all of a sudden be seeing red or want to jump outside of our skin. And it makes it really, really challenging to, to just be present. And I always say, you know, the more we just connect to how we're feeling rather than to the thoughts themselves, the more we're able to actually transform it. And I'll explain what I mean. Because when, as we continue on, I invite you to really pay attention to the way that you're breathing. Now that you've had the ice and you've had to kind of breathe through it, and especially if you are you suffer from anxiety, then the, then body scan meditations are going to be your lifesaver. They're going to be the thing that you really come back to so often, and that is because. The way that I work is I base every I go on feeling. So you can you have lots of therapists who do talk therapy and you talk about your problems and you talk about your problems and you run yourself into circles. But I personally find when the energy is moving so fast, you kind of stir the pot a lot. And so I've done a lot of work and I've trained to focus more on how you're feeling so you're able to change the way that you're feeling. And like Einstein said, you know, you can't solve a problem with the same energy that created it. So when you change the way that you're feeling, it's almost like walking into a new room. You now have access to thoughts that you would never have had access to if you were still in the same energy state. And it's also like watching TV. You got Supernatural on TNT, but that doesn't mean that it's not playing on another station and a whole lot of episodes playing on a different station. You're just watching one episode on one channel with one station, but there's a whole other episode, probably seasons ahead, you know, on the CW or on Netflix that you can watch at a different frequency, at a different stage, and give you access to a whole new episode, a whole new, a whole new season. And so that's why I always encourage people to really dive more into how, what their thoughts are making them feel rather than the thoughts themselves. Does that make sense? Give me a hashtag, yes, if that makes sense. <laughs> Give me a hashtag, yes, if that makes sense. Um, because when you are mindful to all of that, you, you really do, do start shifting, shifting. So if anybody has any questions around the way that they're feeling, how they, how thoughts can stir them up, totally open to, to talking about how Right on. Thank you for the yeses, guys. I appreciate the yeses. Um, that is, that's so great um, because when you are able to shift your energy, you, you really do just start having access to different things and it's, and it's a faster way to feel better. And that is what I am all about is how can we feel better faster? How can we let go of our traumas or the situation that's got us bugging in our head faster because the energy is moving so fast. So I feel like we need to be, you know, like superheroes <laughs> in our own minds, in our own minds. And so one of the things that I also want to encourage with what you discovered with the ice exercise is to become your own life coach. Learn to speak to yourself in a way that a life coach would speak to you you know, or that version of yourself that has achieved what you would like to achieve and knows what you've got to go through to get there, speak to yourself in as loving a way as possible. And so even right now, I just want you, as we slowly move into the being preparing ourselves for the meditation, I just want you to be aware of the feet now. You, I, I brought up being aware of how you're breathing and I really want you to pay attention to the candor of my voice. There's no rush. We're not in any hurry. We have all the time we need right now in this moment. And to just start feeling your feet, feeling your toes, feeling all the muscles, and just relaxing all the energy that you can in your feet. Let them truly become roots into the earth and just allow yourself to be grounded. Yes, so somebody just asked about, do you use reframing as a part of your toolkit? Yes, I do. 
And that's part of what I was speaking to when I said I was having a conversation with my friend and we were talking about how I kept saying, it's, I knew it was going to be hard. I was just like, and I knew it was going to be hard. And then I went to the grocery store and I was, and I knew it was going to be hard. And then I got home and I had to do the workout and I knew it was going to be hard. And she was just like, you know, you said it's going to be hard like 15 times and it's only been five minutes. Do you really want that to be your mantra? And so a lot of, a lot of what comes from changing your state of being, your emotional state of being by just going inward and even relaxing your feet, relaxing your ankles and moving yourself up, moving all the way up the body, you start to shift the energy. And that's when I became, that's when I had access to the new thought, which was I knew I would have to be present. And I knew I would have to be present. This feels different and it actually feels better. And it reminds me of my intention and because we can't have what we want to have without being present. And so a lot of what I do with the Trinity of Truth method is allowing you, giving you a practice that allows you to have joy every step of the way. Because I, I know for myself, I have completed tasks, I have achieved goals, and then just not enjoyed them. You know, I wanted to book a certain gig, and then I got it but the cast was horrible to me. The crew just did not feel right. And it was just a horrible situation versus when my intention was to work with people who felt like family and friends. Then all of a sudden I started aligning myself with work that really did align with that. And shows like Supernatural became part of my resume and I made really, really, really great friends and found a really great community because of it. And that all came from having an intention that was different than just getting work. And I think we can all get caught up in wanting to just have what we want. And really, we want what we want because we think we will feel better in the having of it. And another way that I want to encourage you to think about getting what you want is knowing that the good vibe that you are putting out right now is like putting money in the bank. So today, I put $10 in the bank. And over the next 10 days, I keep showing up every day and putting 10 emotional dollars into my bank account, my emotional bank account. In 10 days, I'll have $100. I'll have a better feeling about myself. Just like you could be sure there's going to be $100 in the bank account at the end of the 10 days, you can be sure you're going to feel good in 10 days if you are investing in yourself on a daily basis. But if you're like, I put $10 in, then I took $5 out, and then I put another $10 in, then I took $250 out, and then, I, and then you start losing track, and you're like, how much how much love did I put in my bank? It's been 10 days. Hell, it's been three months, and I think I only got $5. So it's one of those things where the more we are mindful of what we're actually investing in, which is ourselves, and putting that, putting that aside for ourselves, it will be there for us later on when we need it most, when we need that strength, when we need that resilience. Because one thing I can tell you is you have survived 100% of your bad days. That's a good track record. And it's amazing because like a show like Supernatural, where the themes are so clear about love, hate, demons, monsters, you know, being other people, feeling like you've been cursed, you know, from birth, no, no less, are things that we literally work through every single day. And it doesn't matter who you are or what you have, nobody gets to escape having to do the work. We all have to show up for ourselves. Nobody gets it by chance or by fluke. You have to be present to the journey. And Let's see, I just want to have a look at what you guys are saying in the chat. I love you guys too. Oh, this is so great. Oh, I love it. You guys can relate because sometimes, like, this is how I know you guys are my people. It's because sometimes, you know, you say something and someone's like, what? And you're like, nothing, nothing resonated. 
I also have my crystal. I have a clearing quartz and I have a rose quartz because I like to clear the energy and the love in. And, um, and so I just wanted to let you know that that is me sending good vibes to you your way. And uh, I just lo I, I love you guys. This is so amazing. And someone said, Dan said he had a job interview two weeks ago and he told me so privately here that he would get the job. I got the call this morning. That you got the job! There you go. And right on. Congratulations, Dan. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I think it's really important. The other day on social media, I put a challenge out there and I'm always going to challenge you to just pour positive thoughts into your mind because I think the more you do it, the more the more you feel better with yourself and, and the better you get at and doing it and the quicker your reflexes are to return to them. So I think it's really helpful, but sometimes you need to be reminded. Um, and I do it for myself as much as to share with other people because I'm super, super passionate about all of this. So I'm just going to have a look if there's any questions. Um, yeah, oh, I love crystals. In fact, I, I want to know more about your crystals sometimes. My, you can always subscribe to my newsletter. It's, there's a link to subscribe in uh, the link in my bio on Instagram, and I'd be happy to have you there. That's also where you can get the Trinity of Truth mini manifesting series that is straight from my heart, hot off the presses. And um, I, I really, and you know, I've been doing that for years. I've really been practicing that way of manifesting for years. And in a, on a whim, I was just like, what can I give everybody that I know would change their lives for the best? And that would be super easy for me to do. And so literally in my, in like a night, I was like, I want to give this to them. And I grabbed my husband and I was like, let's make a video <laughs> and let's put it all together. And I got a booklet already and I just, you know, made a PDF so people could have it if they, if they were hearing impaired or whatever, and they wanted to be able to read it, some people also prefer to read. Um, so I made a booklet, I made a video series, and um, I have meditations online because I really, I really believe in this message. So I wanted people to have it, and I didn't want it to be something that we even had to pay for. I wanted it to be something that we, as my gift, you know, for all the love and support because I think it's, it's what you guys do is so beautiful because you show up every day and. Every time I read your comments, it just inspires me to continue and just know that you, by showing up and not putting on yourself, you are inspiring somebody in your circle and your community as well. Um, and so let me just see if there is a good place online to get crystals. Um, I will tweet, I will send, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you do, but if you follow me on Instagram, I can't remember what their website is, so I will actually look that up and make sure to do a tweet about it or to do that. Leave a message on Instagram or just DM me on Instagram and I will let you know. And Oh, I love it. All oh, right on. Everyone's congratulating Dan. See this community is the best. Um, permission. That's going to be all what I'm going to be doing next week is, is uh, talking about permission slips. Because we all really, we really do deserve to have the time that it takes to do the work to love ourselves. We are worthy of that. Um, so, I'm so, this is one of the reasons I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you guys being here because the more people showing up, the more people putting loving, calm, chill vibes out into the world, the more I believe in my heart, I truly, truly do, that that is what actually helps the grass grow. That is actually what makes the world run um, with love and good vibes. And I love it. It is a Canadian site. I do believe. 
And yeah, all right. So let's get nice and comfortable. So I want to start reading for a nice, long, luxurious meditation that lets you feel at ease. And so wherever you are, I just want you to become aware of the surface that you're sitting on and how it's supporting you right now. And know that there is no right way, there's no wrong way to do this meditation. And if you catch yourself thinking of something else, just bring yourself back when you remember. And I want us to start by connecting with our breath on a very slow inhale, just Breathing in as deep as we can, holding at the top of the inhale for just a moment, and then exhaling. And let's do that again. Inhale, nice and slow. Hold at the top, and exhale at the bottom. And now what's really great about this meditation is it calms the nervous system. So this is something you can do anywhere, anytime, and it just helps you relax. And so as we put our attention before on our feet, I just want us to take a moment to just go back to our feet. And we're gonna bring that sensation all the way up. You can do this with your eyes open, your eyes closed, but just follow the rhythm of my voice. Allow yourself to get lost in each and every single word. And you don't have to worry about being anywhere but here. There's nothing you need to do to breathe. There's no one you need to be but you. And allow yourself to feel your feet And just gently bring your focus inward and let me be your guide. Ask yourself right now, what does it feel like to love myself from the inside out? What does it feel like in my feet? What does my body want to tell me right now? What does it feel like to love myself from the inside out, in my feet, in my ankles, in my shins, and in my calves? You might get a sensation of things just loosening up and expanding. Follow that feeling. And again, ask yourself, what does it feel like to love myself from the inside out? in my knees, in my thighs, in my hamstrings. What does it feel like to love myself in my sit bones and in my hips? What does it feel like to love myself in my lower back? Breathe gently into each of these spaces. Try and create more space here. What does it feel like to love myself from the inside out, in my stomach, in the middle part of my back, around my chest, around my shoulders? You may even find that your shoulders want to fall a little bit. Let that happen. Invite everything in and just let it go down into the earth where it can be received and transformed. Again, ask yourself the question, what does it feel like to love myself from the inside out in my arms, in my forearms, in my hands, all the way into my fingers. What does it feel like to love myself in my neck? What does it feel like to love myself in the back of my head? What does it feel like to love myself in my face? 
Relax any muscle between your eyes, around your eyes, around your cheekbones, around your nose, around your mouth, all the little muscles, your jaw. And just gently let a smile come on your face. From the inside out, just feel what that smile feels like. And again, ask yourself while you're connected to all of yourself, what does it feel like to love myself from the inside out? This may be the first time you're ever asking yourself this question, but your body has an answer for you. It may bring your attention to certain areas in your body that you extra attention, a little bit more breath. It may be coming in your ankles or your neck or your lower back, but I invite you to breathe deeply into those areas and create space around any spots that feel tight or restricted. Continue to breathe. And now just take a moment and just remind yourself that you are worthy of love. And I'm going to say a phrase, and I want you either out loud or in your mind to say, and I will see that. So I'm going to say, I am loved, and I will see that. I am worthy of forgiveness, and I will see that. And just repeat this gently to yourself with every mantra that I share with you. I am beautiful. And I receive that. I am worthy, even on my worst of days, of being loved. And I receive that. I am special. And I receive that. I am enough. And I receive that. I am loved, and I receive that. Allow yourself to take another deep breath, and take another one, and take another one. And just congratulate yourself for breathing deeply, consciously, and allow yourself to feel good in this moment. You have taken time for yourself to breathe, to relax, to love yourself. You are worthy, you are special, you are enough. And having a newborn has taught me that you don't need to do anything to be worthy, to be special, to be enough. You are a magical creature. And the day you came into this world, love came into it as well. A whole lot more love came into it. It was as though the universe said, wait, we need one more thing. And then you were born. That is the beauty of birthday. And so I just invite you to take a minute right now to breathe deeply. Allow your breath to feel as though it was an elevator. And you breathe in, bringing the elevator all the way down to the base of the spine. 
collecting all the negative stuff that's not yours to carry. Fill up the elevator. Bring it all the way back up and exhale what is not yours to carry. And then inhale a whole bunch of love and send it all the way down to the base of the spine. Let it fill your entire being. And before you bring your breath out, collect all the negative stuff that's not yours to carry. And bring the elevator all the way back up. And exhale. And now that we've become super present, I want you to hold on to this heightened state of awareness. Ask your body to remember this feeling. Ask your body to remind you of this feeling when you feel tempted to feel fractured or separated from yourself. Ask your body to bring you back to this state as often as possible. I want you to almost as if you could hear my voice in your head saying, breathe. Breathe. I knew I was going to have to be present. I knew I was going to have to be present. And once again, ask yourself, what does it feel like? Get a good sense of this feeling. What does it feel like to love myself from the inside out. And let's breathe nice and deep one more time. We're going to do three nice, long, deep breaths. Inhaling on a slow count of two. One, two, hold for two. Exhale for two. And let's do it again. Inhale for two. Hold for two. And exhale for two. And let's do that one more time. Inhale for two. Hold for two, and exhale for two. Three deep breaths are a beautiful place to start with any meditation. Whether you add that on to brushing your teeth, taking a shower, cooking, going for a walk, driving, it's a wonderful way to begin practice of mindfulness that leads you into a more solid meditation practice. And the thing about these three deep breaths is they can represent anything and everything you want them to represent. If you want them to represent money coming to you, if you want them to represent you finding the love of your life, you feeling better, curing, curing yourself of whatever ailment, take three deep breaths and allow yourself the affirmation of these three deep breaths represent the thing that I would like, whether it be a partner, a job, money, a car, you name it. Everything we want is because we really do believe we will feel better if we have it. And so we can feel better so that we can have it because we think that if we, we have to wait till it gets here before we can see it. We have to wait before it, sh it can show up. When the truth is it'll show up faster if we feel better. So I want to just take the last five minutes to see if anyone has any questions, see if anyone wants to share what their experience was like. If that felt relaxing, if they feel better, my 
full intention of this is that you receive anything and everything that you need. And I do hope that people receive grace in this time that we were together. So great. I love it. It's like the chat room just kind of like still. Which <laughs> is great. Oh, I love it. I feel a lot better now. That's so great. Oh, I love it. Yeah, don't be surprised if when doing this work. It gets emotional. I'm not talking like this little tear. I'm talking like it's not running down your nose while the day was in an Oscar when you perform this kind of crime, you know what I mean? That is all a part of it. And and you are not doing it wrong if you get really emotional or if you feel heightened sense of emotion. Um, you're doing it exactly right and because um, you want to get those emotions up and out so that the universe can give you something new and give you a new emotion and um, you're stirring the pot a little bit um, and that's always a good thing so just going to have a look at what the public guy was saying oh great Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm so glad. Take this energy with you and let it completely bleed into the rest of your weekend, into the rest of your week, into the rest of the last few months of the year. You can come back to this anytime you want. I do have meditations on Anchor that you're able to listen to if you ever want to do a self love meditation. I even do my own self-love meditation from time to time and it just feels good. Um, it's amazing how asking the body questions can give us answers um, and highlight for us where we need to actually give a little bit more extra. P L C. And so I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity to take a breath with you guys. This is the stuff that gives me life. I needed it as much as anybody else needed it because when we give, we receive. And when we receive, we give. So thank you so much for letting me take a breath with you, for letting me into this space. It has been a beautiful, sacred session and I'm so incredibly grateful for each and every single one of you. Be blessed. Pisa, thank you so much for your guidance, your wisdom, and your inspiration. Your meditations are incredibly powerful, and everything you say comes from the heart. So on behalf of your breathers, we want to thank you for leading us through the meditation today, and thank you for reminding us to love ourselves. Um, I was tearing up, too. And I also think my, the ice, my hand is still cold from the ice. Anyway, tipping is now done, and we'll bring you the results in just a few moments. But make sure you're signed up for our email list through our website, creationent.com, and follow us at creationent on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and at Creation Entertainment on TikTok for announcements on more virtual content to come. Okay, our winner is... N.E. Davis. N.E. Davis, you are you are our winner. We're going to contact you via email right now, so check your inbox, but also please hang out in this chat in case we have an issue reaching you. Once again, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Lisa Berry, and we'll see you again soon.